Let's talk about this. Budget. Column. Bottom. That shows. Um, that was decided. <laughs> Not expecting that. A couple of things. Firstly, unbound. That uh, 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 Also, um, that would have instead of having. Go to are still very big out there. Don't know what budget they want. That would be. Um, also, Um, I mean, first thing for the our retirement of security. Now, the one extra funding piece in there is the one point four six one million dollar grant money that I included last time that will help us some of the salary piece. You scroll down further, you see the salary increase. 
contractually obligated uh, personnel services. Not only the health insurance, but also the retirement, the life insurance. Well, not only uh, not only contractually obligated, but but they increase health insurance, all of their health insurance. Um, so the only budget of five percent. That is a. Um, however, we are still a little more aggressive in health insurance budgeting, as you know, a lot of doctors. The three hundred series that are special development. Same thing, four hundred. That's where we spend the money. Arrow property, but not looking same flat in there. We're not being in there. We're the same. Last year, basic trends, we spent less than what we budgeted for. So we're going to stay consistent. Now, when it comes to the 500, that is where our contract services are, um, where our school bus services are, our tuition or cyber charter schools are, where our busing out, obviously. That's where that's driven by four point eight seven. Cyber, cyber charter school. Um, our, our experience was not only uh, they did have to have your choice. Our school. Um, however, for the supplies that are just that is not supposed to that is actually Electricity, sewer, and more electricity project, fiscal project of that is the rest of the balance that's the project. That's the also from the gas. It that also that was the reduction. And then moving down to the very last one in the debt service, as you can see, a large hit. Um, I want to point out that talking with our, our auditors, there is a an increase of $110,000 for a food service transfer that will be in the budget. That's something new. Um, that was not in the budget when it was passed. Um, our food service operates a loss. And every year, a lot of times, it's added on to the, uh, the AFR. But instead of doing it at the AFR time, uh, they believe that it's better to put it in the budget so that it shows the public that um, we're going to be transferring money at some point throughout the course of the year and our food service is operating a lot. However, um, just so you're clear, the administration has taken steps to correct that operating loss so it might not come in as steep as that. But that has been the five year historical trend um, as the loss. So, how we correct some of the, uh, the, the loss when we have first, the, uh, the state has offered and will extend the, the seamless summer option, which is uh, allowing us to offer three free meals to our students uh, throughout the pandemic. We have received word that the USDA has, has extended those waivers for the 21 22 school year. We believe, strongly believe, the PDE is going to follow suit and allow us to offer free meals and are booking events to increase participation across all levels. Our participation was going, was, was increasing exponentially uh, in early 2020 until the pandemic hit. The pandemic hit. Obviously, that would be set button on, on our participation. Now we're continuously working on ways to continue to cut that back. So if you look at um, the bottom line here, you can see that the district is still structurally spending more than we take in at $2 million, a little over $2 million. So that number looks very frightening from a, if you're looking at it from a, if you're looking at it like the district is a business, and that's how you can look at it. 
But if you keep in mind that this year is the bad year that we've been harping on, that I've been harping on since my arrival in January. But remember that this number will drop by about $700,000. And when this number drops, we will maintain and we will begin to reach the, the seesaw period where the seesaw will start balancing out for us. Um, and we will start reaching that equilibrium stage where the district will start functioning where we're spending about a equal amount of money as we bring in. Um, but it will need to be, um, we need to continue to, to function as that. And this is functioning with 3.7% tax increase. If the taxes were not increased to 3.7%, it would leave the, the district even further structurally deficient uh, financially and would probably need to further um, structural deficiencies down the road. Even further, I believe that the district will still need to be um, by more financially buoyed by local efforts if the state does not continue, um, does not step up and help us with a little bit of cyber charter uh, reform and to give us a little bit more balance in our subsidy reimbursement rate, especially on the, uh, on the special ed. But that is the look at the, the preliminary budget. Now, I've gone through, especially the 100s and the 200s, with a fine tooth comb to make sure that everything is correct and up to date at 100%, because we had some issues over the last year um, that necessitated the higher end of the HR person that's going to ensure that none of these issues have come up again. So they are correct, and there shouldn't be much adjustments over the next uh, two weeks. The other numbers are continuing to look for some cost cutting areas. But this is probably this is the worst case um, scenario with some cost cutting issues, some cost cutting areas. But primarily, um, I would not expect more than hundred thousand, hundred fifty thousand dollars the most in either way. But for the most part, um, I just wanted to point out the district is still spending money to take care. This is a big issue that we have to continue to ensure that this doesn't uh, continue. And I know Bob, Bob and myself have, have emphasized that even though things may be budgeted for doesn't mean that we have to spend them. And that is why I believe we are gonna turn a $324,000 deficit from 2021 into a $775,000 profit or plus, which is a swing of about a million dollars. So I'm pretty proud of that. I think that uh, will show up in our audience back um, in December this year. So Pete, before you- Yes, sir. Yes, Pete, Mr. Mr. Before you just paid a couple of questions. Um, in the 6,000 account, uh, just to be clear, that's not just property tax revenue, that's EIT and property transfer tax, and real estate tax, all those local sources are in 6,000 account. Okay. Yes, I wanna, uh, Mr. Benz had asked, I just so everybody can hear the question. Um, he had mentioned in the 6,000, it's not just property taxes. Um, uh, that is also earned income tax, uh, real estate transfer taxes. Um, that is also, uh, I also wanna put in that's Public utility transfer taxes and stuff like that, with public utilities being purchased for taxes as well. So the the increase, the year over year increase, the three point seven percent, that represents about seven hundred thousand in property taxes. Right, right. So it's it's approximately seven hundred thousand dollars for the three point seven percent. Right. And last question for me: in the one hundred account, that four point two four, that represents both additional headcount as well as um, any salary increases. That's all rolled together. So right. Yeah, the, yeah, the 4.24 percent of the salary increases covers any additional staff members and also any contractual um, sure. ob obligated staff members. Thank you. Yeah. Are there any questions from any board members, um, either on Zoom or um, present here before I move on to the next slide? Yes, Mrs. Pete, what's the nine? 1.4. Uh, the 1.46 million is the answer to two million. That's one of the COVID relief money. So we can use that money. That money is allotted to use us to spend on staff members. So you'll see some of the staff members will be moved and coded into federally funded staff members, and then we'll be taken out and put back into um, general fund staff members in 2023. So if you see like, a difference in the way the budget looks, it'll look like that for this year. Any questions from uh, Mr. Mahal or any board members before I move on to the next slide? Okay. So here's some updates, um, like to Mr. Benz's um, point. Also included in that six thousand was 
increase the link with tax collections. Over the last three years, we've seen um, normally budget about eight hundred eighty thousand dollars in link with taxes, but We've seen it increase to, to almost a million dollars each year. So I've increased um, the budget to 950000 to account for that. I've also increased the uh, projection for real estate transfer taxes from 380000 to 450000 That also accounts for some of the increases in both revenue um, due to the fact that uh, the real estate transfer taxes have outpaced the last two years, not just this year, but um, even before the market has turned red hot. I turned uh, notice that our real estate transfer taxes have gone up um, substantially. I've also decreased the 500 level expenditures. If you look at the, the presentation that I did three weeks ago to this one, I did lower because um, our, our insurance premiums came in about $80,000 lower um, than they came in the year before. Uh, they were not reflected in the, uh, in the budget. So they came in lower, so I lowered them on this one because I, after talking to our broker, they don't expect a substantial increase on the insurance premiums because of the fact that um, the insurance market did not take a beat. The liability insurance market did not take a beat this year due to the fact that there wasn't a lot of movement in all people. Um, the budgets, uh, every, uh, our, all of our departments submitted budgets this year, and all of the spending remained the same and consistent. Um, there was no increases, there was no uh, requests for any uh, large capital projects or anything of that nature. So uh, there was nothing there was nothing uh, mentioned or anything like that. So we didn't have any included food as well. So now we'll talk about the uh, the fund balance uh, discussion. So the total fund balance was uh, 1.3 million dollars, almost one point three two million dollars. The expectation is to add an additional seven hundred seventy five thousand. And the cost savings is expected to um, how we expect to get to that is over maintenance, the plan operations, over administration, and also over increased revenue. The, uh, the stronger than expected collections are the if you remember the discussion uh, last year at this time was um, due to the COVID shutdown and, and increased unemployment, we thought that our collection rate, which is normally around 95%, would pay a lot to 93%. So I landed around, I just budgeted for 93%. And so, but it actually turned out that our, our market here is, is much more, uh, is more stable than surrounding areas. And we actually ended up with a 95% collection rate despite COVID. Uh, and the real estate transfer tax, the real estate transfers are red hot. If you look at the newspaper every day in this area, and that increased our revenue take in as well. So that will add to our fund balance as well, which is well over performing um, what I budgeted as well. So all these different factors come into play. Um, the furloughs of the staff members saved um, about $150,000 over the course of the furloughs. Also, maintaining the schools being shut down over periods of time that they were shut down saved approximately $175,000 as well. So, keeping the schools shut down um, over periods of time maintain, helped us maintain um, keep the schools not heated and the lights off as well. So, we maintained a lot of cost savings as well as not buying stuff that was budgeted for if we didn't need it and examining every purchase order that came in. So, the this is a very good news for us moving forward. However, it's not the end of the game. We have to continue to keep our, our head focused on the fund balance down. Steve, Steve before you leave that, so, sure. um, do we, back to the other area. So you have the 1.3 yes. up top, and then you have the 775 right below. Right. That puts you about 2.1, which is exactly what, about, or just about exactly what the operating deficit would be next year. So in theory, the budget's covered, but the fund balance is back to zero for next year. And that would be with the 3.7%. With the 3.7%. Yeah. That's the math. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So that'll, I talk about that a little bit more in the next slide. That'll, that also includes using the ESSER 2 money as well. So the extra what? That includes the ESSER 2 money. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So the so the projected, so I have the projected fund balance for 21, 22, 3.7% tax increase is approximately 500,000. So there is a little bit of leeway in there uh, for that. And I have the tax increase of about 220,000. 
So I would expect to cut some more things out of the budget to, to there's some things in this budget as well uh, for the maintenance department, such as purchasing a new pickup truck, as well as, or purchasing or leasing a new pickup truck, as well as um, leasing or purchasing two uh, 10 pass vans for athletics um, to help us ease the transportation situation that we're in um, at this point. Uh, because we have the problem, first off, our pickup truck has about a foot hole in the box. It's been about, that's rotting away, literally rotting away. And in transportation, um, we're having some issues with, has been well documented at the last board meeting, um, with getting people to take some of our smaller groups, hopefully getting a van or two, leasing them or purchasing them, whatever is a more cost-effective option, um, will help us ease that, or help us give us an option to ease that, uh, that transition. So I have some of those extra things in there just in case we have run into those problems and also the opportunity to expand that a little bit more if it turns out to be a better situation for us. But we have to be prepared to run out to, to, to weather the federal cliff, which is what when all the CARES money runs out with the COVID relief money. So we have the ESSER 2 money that was in the 9,000 codes back a couple slides ago. There's also the, the ESSER 3 money or the American CARES Act money. Uh, I don't know if it's called the American Care Act. I'm not sure of the terminology. We can call it the ESSER 3 money, which is where like, the last stimulus money came from. That's another $2.5 million that I didn't talk about today. But we have to be prepared for when that, that money runs out. We have to strengthen the fund balance. We have to prepare for, we have to increase the financial capacity and the revenue streams and continue to decrease expenditures in that, in that particular order. And in the mix of all three of them, not just one, not just two, but all three, and make sure that we are prepared so when that money runs out that we're not left without a fund balance that is between 8 and 10% of our general fund expenditures. So we have a fund balance around $3.5 million when the federal money runs out. Because at that point, the district has to be in a better financial position than it was three years ago, or this would be a complete, you know, this whole process would be a complete failure. So I think um, my goal, Bob's goal, the whole administration goal is to make sure that at the end of this, we're at that process, at that point. And once we're at that point, tax increases such as, you know, 3.7%, 4%, 5% would be, they might not be needed every single year. It may be something small or modest every single year, every year, every other year to float, to get room, to manage the account, to manage the account. The, um, the, the process moving forward. But we have to get to that point where we're in that situation. Um, the district is, is a, this district is a wonderful district and to continue to maintain how wonderful it is, we have to continue to, unfortunately, um, the local effort has to match uh, and be in between 65 and 70% of how the district funds itself. Um, because I don't think the state um, is certainly that's certainly not the federal government um, to help um, when it's when it's uh, when it comes time to run and the wrong way to do it. So this is what with the without the tax increase we would be in a negative fund balance situation, particularly for this year. Next year would be um, you know would be a more dire more dire situation, but we do have some flexibility um, because of that increasing revenue stream or uh, revenue stream increasing of uh, debt service payment. But we still have, yeah, we would still not have that fund balance to rely on if there was an un, uh, unexpected. So the the further discussion I would like to talk about would be the even with three point seven percent tax increase, the Crestwood school district would be the lowest or the second lowest school district in Luzerne County in terms of millage. The districts that are around our millage rate. What our milk grid would be, which would be 11.73 uh, around that around that area, if the, if the millage rate was adopted. Um, all those districts around that area are considering tax increases as well, most likely will adopt them. So I believe that we will be the lowest or the second lowest after that. We also, I will also at the next board meeting in May, the May 20th board meeting, I'm going to ask the board to enact related measures that it did last year to help. Uh, taxpayers due to the pandemic, such as a no penalty period until December 31st, 2021, 
also an installment payment plan where the taxpayers have to pay a third, third and third face value of their bill. Um, as it is, Crestwood was one of the only districts to enact such measures, um, at least when it comes to the installment payment plan, to help their taxpayers to wish to take advantage of that period. Um, I believe that after, hopefully after this year, when the, when the pandemic subsides, I believe that we could probably you know, go back to you know, the base, the discount penalty in place. So there'll still be a discount period, a 2% period, which will go for 60 days. But then there'll be a face period and no penalty period until the taxes get turned over to the collection period um, after December 3rd. I believe this is a good way to uh, give the taxpayers, if they're still having some pandemic related issues, um, the no penalty period as well, and give the board the opportunity to give them. Uh, last year, 47 uh, taxpayers took, the, took, the, took um, advantage of the installment payment plan. And not one taxpayer defaulted on that installment payment plan, so it did work. And um, I believe it's a it's a good way to give our taxpayers a, an opportunity to take advantage of that. So I think the installment payment thing is a, is, a, is could be here to stay. Or we should make it permanent. Uh, the no penalty period thing, I think we would uh, reinstate the penalty period thing after the pandemic abates. But uh, the rest of it, I mean, the rest of it, I think, can stick around for. But that's, uh, that's so into the future, uh, we'll look at beyond 21 22. Uh, the further aquin uh, tax increases may be needed to continue to stabilize financial force press with. Um, I believe that to get to that equilibrium, right? We like I, like I mentioned, the seesaw, or uh, uh, if you ever notice in the playground, the seesaw is up and down. I believe that. The, the tax millage rate needs to be in the low 12s, probably between 12.0 and 12.2. I would believe it would be where, where Crestwood's prime would, would be in that range. Um, but there's not an easy, not, there's no easier one stop fix at this point. But we're, we're working on it. We're certainly well on our way. It's just in a lot better spot than it was uh, two years ago. So we're certainly on its way to fixing it. And I believe we're on the right path. So let's go to um, the next budget meeting is on May 17th, 2021, where the proposed final budget will be discussed. That's where um, we will talk about uh, where the final, post final budget will be. At the conclusion of that meeting, a special board meeting will be convened where the board will vote on the proposed final budget. Mr. Boone had confirmed that that is okay. Um, the proposed final budget, which is not the final budget, so if the board adopts that, does not mean they approve the final budget or any kind of tax increase, it does not mean that. The proposed final budget will then be available on our website and the business office for 30 days and will be advertised also in the newspaper and on our website before the final adoption at the June 17, 2021 regular board meeting of the board. That's where the board will have an opportunity to vote on it. If the board votes that down, we'll have to have another meeting on another budget. Um, sometime before June 3rd, which is the state's mandated um, date that we have to the budget pass. So the next meetings of the board will be committee meetings to set the agenda on May 15th at 4 p.m. They will be held virtually. Um, and the special board meeting, there will be a, a budget and special board meeting to follow on May 17th at 6 p.m. That will, uh, Mr. Boone had also informed me, they will also be virtual instead of in person because it's easier to do them at virtual because um, of the, the, the meeting, or the, excuse me, the voting component afterwards. The regular voting meeting will be on May, that's not the correct. The regular voting meeting will be on May 20th at 6.30 yeah. p.m. And that will also be virtual because the high school auditorium which provides with enough space to socially distance and create it. So the regular voting meeting will be on May 20th at 6.30 p.m. Um, also, is there any other comments um, from the board? Yes, Mrs. Goodbye. When you say a 3.7% increase, what is that an increase to a family for $100,000? Um, I have that on a previous slide. I could look that up for you, but okay. it's somewhere I could provide that information to you. Right. I think just people like to know that, you know, when they're looking at it, they know what they paid last year. And then going forward, they like to know, like, okay, is it going up 30 bucks? Is it going up 200 bucks? Kind of thing. Yeah, I believe I could look it up for you, but I believe it's somewhere. Um, 
Is there any other um, about thirty seven dollars? Yeah. And I have a I have a slide for it. I have a there's a presentation that I first did on um, Mrs. Bibble that shows even like a median household, um, the median household that uh, on Zillow that shows the median household the amount of top zip code is, and that shows how much a three point seven percent increase would be for that household. So I'll make sure that goes up, and I can even incorporate some of those some of that material in the seventeen on the that seventeen themes to make sure it goes over that so that. Freshness in these months, too. So, the, the, the 700,000 that the 3.7% represents, have you given any consideration or done any work yet to figure out what possibly could be cut if the board wouldn't approve an increase at all? So, the question has the question I'll make sure the people are similar. Mm -hmm. The question is if the board didn't adopt the uh, $700,000 tax increase, has there been any? Thought about what can be cut um, if we uh, the board does not approve that. Um, we have some ideas as to what can be cut, but most likely be probably in the maintenance, probably the maintenance supplies and stuff like that. We probably have to scale back some things. We probably have to hold off on purchasing um, pickup truck for them for one year. Try to scale back on mm -hmm. purchasing two with the van and stuff like that for the athletic football program. So, other than that, I think we don't. We're not going to affect any student programming or anything like that. There would be no direct effect to the student student program. So, our goal is never. Here, they need to be committed. Okay. That's hopeful. That's hopeful. Yeah. That will be a will. You know, give eventually. We're going to find ourselves in a whole lot of close to that town. You know, you're looking ahead. What happens to that cost contract next year? So it goes up $250,000. It goes up 3% every year for the next five, the next three years, and then every renews every, every uh, five years for the next 15 years. So, so you can see that that alone. You know, just to maintain that, it's hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. Correct. Without drivers, um, that's why I wanted to get some our own, like a van or two, and then find a way to that's maintain them. And the van is fine, but that, that's actually great. Right. That's not even, you know, that's not even part of the, the state university. Correct. And the state and the state hasn't increased our reimbursement rate in three years now. Jonathan, are there any questions from Facebook? No, I have nothing at this time. Um, is there any other? No, that's not. Your answer to a previous question on a one hundred thousand dollar home, a uh, three point seven percent increase. This comes from your March first. March first meeting is approximately forty two dollars. Forty two dollars. So the the hundred thousand Anna, Mrs. Pibble had asked the question about what a three point seven percent tax increase would be for hundred thousand dollar home. I had figured it out in a previous presentation. It was forty two dollars. Um, I will incorporate some of that material from a previous slide into the seventeen um, budget meeting so that the board has an, an accurate. Um, depiction as to what it would have, what it would be, uh, the impact would be on on households in the, uh, in the community. Are there any uh, questions? There's no questions on the Facebook page. Are there any other questions from anybody here? Hey, this is Laura McRae. Can yes. we how much extra we have spent on uh, busing at the location? Sorry, 
the, the coaches were the coaches were actually a wash. Um, they, were, they were actually the same. They were actually honestly um, a couple of dollars actually cheaper um, <clears throat> than purchasing them from what we were spending. They were not. They were they were, they were actually a wash. They were not much more. Money. But let me explain. This is dirty. Uh, we're taking a coach in lieu of taking two buses because the coach gives you more more room. Uh, so for social distancing purposes. So whenever we try as you know, best possible, where our lacrosse team go out, our track team go out, you, you, if they have more participants, we're trying to uh, use the coach, which is one coach, uh, versus the two buses. So that's what we've been doing. Uh, we we uh, our extracurriculars again utilizing. You know, a lot of local districts, companies, and, uh, you know, right now we're just fortunate that we've been able to keep every uh, away meet going. So we have not, as of yet, had to, you know, not be able to provide transportation. I think there was one event for Pittston, uh, but even that we did have a, a coach elected to just have them. You know, try. And that, that is not something that we're going to ask our students and families to do unless it's absolutely uh, the last resort. But it, it's the extracurriculars so far, we're, we're probably about even, uh, even with the coaches because we're taking uh, one instead of two. Now, when we go back to regular um, spacing and not need social distancing, we will need. Two regular buses for for an event, so it will be cheaper to use school buses. But for right now, it's um, you know, like Mr. Mahalik said, like a full state. So. Are there any other questions? All right. Well, that's it. Thank you very much for your for your participation, and we'll see you uh, at the committee meetings in about ten days. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Have a good day.